Rising prices of fuel and other inputs along with fresh coronavirus outbreaks are slamming the brakes on the world's second largest economy. In the second quarter, GDP growth in China dropped to its slowest pace since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, business activity grew just 0.4% between April and June, after shrinking by nearly 7% in the previous quarter. Authorities had initially targeted 5.5% GDP growth for this year, but analysts say that goal will likely be missed. It was not easy for the economy to maintain positive growth in the second quarter. Looking ahead, the risk of stagflation in the global economy is rising and there is still a lot of uncertainty over the recovery of the domestic economy. But the Chinese economy remains resilient and long-term prospects have not changed. Now, the world's largest economy isn't faring any better. Officials say U.S. GDP contracted 1.6 per cent in the first quarter. That's worse than earlier estimates. And the International Monetary Fund says growth will remain stunted until 2025. It expects the U.S. economy to expand just 2.3 per cent this year, compared to the government's target of 2.9 per cent. It expects the rate of unemployment to hover around 3.7 per cent against Washington's 3.2 per cent forecast. And the IMF says joblessness will worsen to more than 5 per cent in 2024. Wages are not keeping pace with inflation. That's going to continue to exert a lot of pressure on workers' wallets. I think you're going to see personal finances become increasingly strained. And um, I would look towards the end of the year to start seeing a downright pullback in consumer spending, as opposed to what we've seen thus far, which is this pretty dramatic reallocation and a lot of trading down and substitution. Well, let's get more on this now with Taha Arvas, who's an adjunct professor of finance at Boğaziçi University. He joins us now from the eastern Turkish city of Şanlı Urfa. Good to have you with us as always, Taha. Let's start with the U.S. economy. As we heard, their GDP in the world's largest economy contracted in the first quarter, and several trackers of economic growth are predicting another contraction in the following quarter. So that will mean a recession. Is a slowdown needed in order to bring down inflation in the United States? Uh, it seems the Federal Reserve thinks so. Uh, and frankly, uh, what the Fed thinks is the most important thing now. The, the, the reality is the answer to this question is no one really knows. Uh, and the Fed has even admitted as much. Uh, do we need uh, a recession in the United States? Do we need a slowdown, even a contraction to slow inflation? That's the 60,000, that's the, excuse me, the $20 trillion question right there. Um, and the answer is uh, $20 trillion have been printed during the pandemic more than any amount have been printed in the entire history of the United States and, frankly, the global economy. So the question is, how can we reverse what was happened, what, what happened during the pandemic? And that, the answer to that, no one really knows. But it appears the Fed believes a slowdown is necessary to slow inflation. Uh, that's right. And sticking with the Fed, so basically it's on a monetary policy tightening spree at, at the moment. Interest rates have been steadily rising, some say perhaps uh, too quickly. The benchmark rate is now uh, within a range of around one and a half to 1.75 percent. And analysts say we can expect another rate rise at the end of this month, perhaps by a full uh, percentage point. Now, uh, these raises have been described in historic terms, but realistically, interest rates in the US are still historically low when you compare it to the 80s and 90s. So do you believe that there needs to be perhaps a drastically uh, higher interest rate in order to have uh, some sort of a significant effect on inflation as the Fed uh, theorizes? I, I think that's, um, that's, as you said, the Fed theorizes as much. Uh, a lot of people think that this has been, that this raised the relative increase in, in interest, which is, like you said, if, when you're going from almost 0% interest to to the amount we're at now, and uh, potentially to the three and a half or four percent interest that some Fed presidents have predicted by the end of the year, uh, that's a major increase, despite it being low. Uh, so that's going to impact uh, the global uh, economy, uh, the global environment, and uh, the United States economy. So the question is, will will these current uh, uh, rises in interest rates do enough to slow inflation? Um, we just saw recent data today about increases in, in consumer spending in the United States. Retail sales are up. Um, uh, it appears that some measures are slowing, uh, but, you know, gas is the most expensive it's been in, uh, in ever, ever uh, the, uh, since I can remember. I don't think, I, I think this is a record across the United States, and that's really pushing inflation uh, in the United States. So 
Um, the, the, the unfortunate, I, I apologize for not having a, a great answer as in uh, this is the silver bullet, it's going to work, but uh, that's what the Fed thinks and uh, we'll know in a couple months, frankly. Uh, and like you said, at the end of the month, we'll see at least a 75 basis point increase, probably a 75 basis point increase in the interest rates and we'll see what, I, what that leads to in the coming weeks after that. Okay, Taha Arvas, we'll have to leave it there, but really good to get your analysis as always. Thank you.